they 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 pronounce this. Uh -huh. She explains why these sounds exist here. So this is something that uh, exaggerating the feature. Yeah, this is this is great, Richard, and uh, this reminds me of something that I read that Japanese learners cannot hear the difference between between l and r, but they learn when there is intensive training when l and r are exaggerated. So maybe this really might help those learners who are not hearing the sounds. And um, Barbara, I'm really sorry that you experienced that, but the links will be provided later. You might be able to catch up. So she also uh, pronounced the words uh, several times, so the learners had uh, auditory support. Did they have any visual support? Her mouth here, so this was the opposite of what Mark did. Here, she basically really demonstrated with her lips and her mouth and her, her hands what is going on. Um, did did they get understanding? Yes, uh, as you mentioned, and they did speak, right? So this is a slightly different, uh, this is a different thing that um, could be done. And just to give you a very brief idea, uh, a very um, uh, briefly to give you an idea of what happened next. Um, so there was a pronunciation drill, as you said. Then they did another gap fill, this time based not on the teacher's pronunciation, but it was supplied by a course book. And this is what the feedback to the gap fill looked like. So you can see a lot of visual support here. And finally, I think it was a very interesting tweak. Uh, they did a transcription exercise. They listened to five sentences and transcribed the whole sentence. But these were the sentences from the target text that they were going to listen. And these sentences contained this uh, pronunciation feature. So basically, uh, the whole lesson was turned upside down, and then they listened to the text the first time for just, and then did all the kinds of work that we discussed um, during week two. So another lesson, unfortunately, we will not be able to watch it now, because uh, that would mean that we would uh, run out of time. But it is available for you on the platform. And uh, just to give you a little bit of context, in this uh, this lesson is different from the previous two lessons in that the learners are higher level, so these are B1 plus learners, and they are transcribing bits from an authentic recording. And um, the teacher is helping them to really hear the features of pronunciation in exactly more as exactly the same way that we did at the beginning of this session, right? And I would encourage you to, to watch this one and to think about the following two questions. So which similarities do you see with the two lessons that we've already seen? And what do you notice um, that uh, we have not seen yet? So. Uh, just quickly, a couple of more activities uh, before we move on to really working with authentic materials. So uh, these two couple of activities uh, can be done with any listening text too. So the first one is, so this was actually mentioned by Sheila last time. Could you remember the activity? So you stop the tape and then you do what? Ask what they heard. Ask them to transcribe the last, uh, the last four or five words. Okay. And the reversal of this activity would be what? You stop the tape and do what? Ask what comes next here. And um, let's do really just one sentence or two sentences. Uh, guess the following two or three words. 
Uh, can you listen to track 15 and tell me what part of speech comes after uh, after the last word? So this is again track 15. Uh, I'm going to give you the link now again and it stops mid-sentence. What part of speech should be next? What do you think? So you, you've always been like a So you you've always been like a So you you've always been like a it's for now. Mm -hmm. now. Right. Listen to track 16 and check. So you you've always been like a daredevil, but um, you've done. I think I've talked to you about check. you swim with. So you you've always been like a daredevil, but um, you've done. I think I've talked to you about you swim with. Did you catch the now? Daredevil. Okay, and it continue like that. Um, unfortunately, okay. What about, listen to track 16 one more time. Again, what part of speech do you think comes after the last word? So you, you've always been like a daredevil, but um, you've done, I think I've talked to you about, you swim with. Now, any idea what noun? Listen to track A, uh, A, C, 17 and check. You swim with sharks, or you have. Yeah. And you, you swim with sharks, or you have. Sharks. Right. Uh-huh, sharks. Yeah, and you continue like that. And this kind of activity is really easily done with EGSAP, where you can easily re- uh, choose um, a, a part of the audio track and play it. Okay, so, uh -huh, fantastic. Now let's move on to another activity and this is an activity by Michael Greenberg uh, who is actually kindly created a video for us to watch. This is not a classroom demonstration but he teaches online and um, this is something that could be done in an online class classroom or actually in an offline classroom. So here is the video. It is six minutes and you can, if you could watch it and type in the chat box when he asks you to type, that would be just fantastic. Hi, my name is Mike Greenberg, and I'm going to play a game with you. So, before, just before we do that, um, I would like to play the audio you've already listened to today, and I will show you the text. So, what I will ask you to do is to listen and to read at the same time, and I will ask you to pay attention because uh, the game is going to be about the sounds of the language. So I will ask you to listen very, care very carefully and pay attention to how different words are pronounced. Let's go. What are you talking about? Well, then how'd you get down? I had, <laughs> I jumped out of the airplane, and then my first shoot didn't open. They cut. It's tandem, so somebody's on your back. They cut that line. We started free falling towards Earth, and that's when you get the you know eight by ten glossies of your whole life flashing before your eyes. <laughs> and then the second one was tangled as well, and I saw my friends sort of popping off with their you know their parachutes, and I'm still plummeting towards planet Earth. And and then that was tangled for about a good I don't know twenty thirty seconds, and then he untangled it, and then he told me, oh, you're probably going to break your legs now because this we're going too fast. Great. And now I'm going to play some very short fragments of this fragment to you. So these are some real 
some, some bits and pieces uh, of the recording. And what I'll ask you to do is if you're watching us live, just type in the exact fragments of the text that you hear into the chat box. If you're watching us uh, as a recording, uh, just uh, write down the exact part, uh, parts of the text that you hear. Let's, let's do it. So here's the text, and here comes the first fragment. Talking. What is it? Talking. And the answer is, of course, so that's the word. What are you talking about? Well, then how'd you get down? Okay, I will now speed up and play five more fragments like this to you. Try to be as precise as you can, because sometimes you, don't, you will not hear whole words, but you will hear parts of words. Let's go. Jumped out of the air. Jumped out of the air. I had, <laughs> I jumped out of the airplane and then parachuted. Parachuted. My first shoot didn't open. Earth and that's when. Earth and that's when. We started free falling towards Earth, and that's when you get the. And sort of, and sort of tangled as well. And I saw my friend sort of popping off. And then, and then. Okay, that that one that one was easy. And and then that was tangled for about. Okay, so. Um... You, you'll probably agree with me that the activity you've just experienced is a weird one. But please trust me, it's a useful one. It's helped dozens of my students to literally open their ears and start hearing the raw sound of the language. Uh, the phenomenon we're talking about here is something that is called auditory acuity. You can see auditory acuity as not a language skill, but a, as a listening skill. Or you can, par you can see it as part of bottom-up listening skills. It's really not that important at the moment. Let's, let's quickly walk through the process, the procedure. You can see it on the screen right now. Uh, and basically the idea is that you just play some very short fragments um, of the um, audio recording, and the students should draw a box about uh, the part that they hear. That's it. That's very easy. And here are some tips. Um, if you if you teach groups, I suggest that you make it competitive. Um, so if you play a game like that. You you hand out um, copies of the transcript, and pairs of students um, just draw boxes, and then um, you see which group. Um, is better at it. So uh, which group gets more fragments or which group is more precise? Uh, I wouldn't recommend you to spend more than 10 minutes uh, on this activity because it can get exhausting and uh, it requires a lot of concentration. Uh, it usually works well with the fragments you've already examined or listened to. And there are different ways you can um, cut your recording. You can cut out single words, groups of words, or, which is my favorite, you can uh, cut across the word boundaries or between the word boundaries, uh, depending on how you see it. So, um, and of course, this uh, activity can serve as a springboard for further analysis. Would you like to learn more? Um, just uh, go to learn.michaelgrimberg.com slash EVO, and here is what you're going to get. You're going to get the slides, the video, and you're also going to get the slides from my TESOL France workshop where I share um, other activities with the participants. Uh, you will also be getting invitations to um, some of my other presentations and work workshops for teachers. And yes, this is a kind of a newsletter, but you can always unsubscribe if you wish. So there is no real commitment. Thank you very much for watching me today and uh, enjoy the rest of the course. Okay, I'm happy that you enjoyed this one. And just just a comment that I wanted to make, actually two comments. So uh, here, so first, Michael wanted to me to share the link with you. Here it is, and 
Um, two comments. First, again, this is pretty easy to do with Audacity or oh, with EGSAP if you have it, because it's really, really, really easy to isolate just any part and replay it over and over and over again. This is one thing. And the second thing is that there are learners whose brain basically sees the uh, word and supplies the pronunciation. And then when they listen, they do not hear. And uh, Michael shared with me that basically this activity helps them to break out of this um, out of this cycle where the brain just uh, shuts up their ears and supplies the pronunciation because here uh, they have to listen here. So Sydney made a, a point that okay, you listen in context, but here they have to really understand where it starts and where it finishes, and so they really have to switch their ears back on, which is why it is such an interesting, technologically interesting activity, I think. So, um, right, so um, there will be quite a few more activities in the readings. And uh, I hope that you dip into them because we, unfortunately we cannot try everything out. So there is just one thing that I wanted to show you, one more thing. So um, in this activity that you saw uh, with my, uh, that Michael uh, sh shared with, with, with you, um, you saw that um, it was pretty crucial that you have the subtitles. And in my I would say it's uh, it, a listening a listen to coding lesson becomes very difficult on the teacher if there are no subtitles because um, basically what you need to produce is uh, some kind of visual support for the learners, some kind of gap fills, and for a lot of people this would mean a lot of transcribing, and transcribing takes time. So just a bit of a few tips where to look for uh, stuff with subtitles. So first this particular uh, video, where did we take subtitles? Um, there is a fantastic feature of YouTube that not everybody is aware about. So uh, it is the interactive, yeah, uh, uh, this is interactive transcript that comes with every subtitled YouTube video. And uh, so you can of course switch on the subs, but this is not a very good idea. Uh, but uh, we, because because the learners will be reading and not listening. But uh, for your own use, uh, the, if you click on more, you will see this. You will see transcript, and when you choose it, this is the whole transcript, and it's interactive. You can click on any line and play just that line. So. And uh, there is immediately, and this is extremely useful, because um, immediately there are other activities that you could do. Because um, here I opened my browser search and typed in the problematic word was. And uh, I immediately see that there are al almost two dozen examples of this word in this video. And I can, for example, play just those, video, uh, those lines in isolation. And my learners can do a little bit of transcribing. But as you remember, at the beginning, I, I was talking about the importance of having uh, intensive practice. And this is exactly what we need, right? So, so this is a ready-made intensive practice that you do not need to, to, uh, to create in advance. Here, you just uh, open an, on, uh, a YouTube video with subtitles. And how, how do I open the browser search, by the way? Not everybody aware is aware of that. Control F. Here you type Control F on Max. I think it's something Command F. But here and you can see there are um, there are arrows over here, and um, and uh, it will just the arrow will navigate you to the next line. Why did we learn EGSAP? Because EGSAP allows you to isolate a word, not just one sentence. Okay, so uh, another thing. So how, how do I actually look for those videos that have subs? So two things. The first one is really, really, really easy. You add a comma 
as paste and CC to your YouTube search and you're basically done. Everything that uh, all the videos that you get are the videos with the subtitles, right? And um, more than that, I can hear somebody thinking here, I have seen YouTube subtitles, they are terrible. Um, but no, basically if this transcript says English, if it doesn't say English automatic captions, it means that the subtitles are good quality. And uh, very often they will lack words like, you know, sort of and so on, but everything else is there and you do not need to transcribe. And of course, um, so this is, this is useful in my in, in my experience. The only problem is, of course, you have to check that these subtitles are in English because these might be Portuguese subtitles. But uh, the uh, vast variety of the vast majority of subtitles on YouTube are in English. So another thing that is useful to know about is that some particular YouTube channels uh, provide very high quality content with very high, high quality subtitles. I'm, main, I'm trying to maintain a list on this blog post. I will uh, post the link after the session. But basically, the kinds of things that you could not uh, find is my favorite one is uh, Talks at Google. Talks at Google is interviews which are one hour long and uh, they contain fantastic, uh, very good subtitles. And um, why I like interviews is that they are inherently chunked. And so it's very easy to uh, find an inter uh, a question with a short, interesting life story answer that you could work with in the lesson, right? So just three minutes. But uh, then you have this huge interactive transcript which contains lots and lots and lots of features of pronunciation with this speaker's accent. So basically, uh, even if you, for, in, for instance, isolated that the, the learners cannot hear words like probably, probably, right? So a long transcript will contain five, six, seven of these, right? And this it will be enough to give them some training. So, so interviews are my favorite. Trailers could be very motivating for the learners. They are, in my experience, the most difficult in terms of decoding. Educational videos are the easiest in terms of decoding and the most difficult in terms of vocabulary. So your learners might feel that, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing all the functional words. What about all the, uh, all the vocabulary? I'm not getting it even if I'm reading it. So. <clears throat> But there is a full list here, uh, and you, I, I would suggest exploring some of the channels. Sometimes, um, for example, the Ellen Show also often trans, um, provides videos with subtitles. And the last thing that I wanted to show you, we still have something like 11 minutes, and this is the tool that I've been co-creating uh, with um, Kirill Suhamlin. And it's also based on YouTube subtitled videos and uh, it's called TubeQuizzard and as you can see here there are quizzes in TubeQuizzard and some of them target pronunciation of grammar, some of them target just features of connected speech, something like illusion, and some of them target vocabulary. So, but uh, why am, so this is a, a sample quiz here, so something like, like that, you just see the transcript and there are gaps in the uh, um, there, there are uh, gaps in the transcript and all the gaps contain vocabulary. So the link to this particular quiz is here and you can actually open it and try this quiz out. So
Oh, that's just horrible. So what's the scariest thing you've ever done? Oh, that's just horrible. So what's the scariest thing you've ever done? I was on a plane into Russia and the engine exploded. I was looking out. Exploded. I was looking out the window and the entire engine just turned into a fire. In order to work it, you need to click on uh, the line and then uh, the tool will just play the line and uh, you type in the what you hear and click on check and if you were right uh, it will be highlighted in yellow and if it was no in, in green and if you were not right uh, it will supply the answer so uh, Anna is saying that it was difficult to find uh, videos with good subtitles, but I've just explained how to look for videos with high quality subtitles. Right, so, but basically the good thing about this is that you can build your own uh, quizzes um, based on the videos that you're working on, not the videos that I chose to display on the open site. And there are two ways, um, zero preparation way and um, something where you actually uh, create something. So the zero preparation way is you go to train with your video and just type in the URL. And we run them past, uh, we run the video past your searches, uh, past, past our filters. And for example, here we found, um, here, here you, you, we found s some, uh, some examples of uh, past simple, and uh, um, there is a quiz on, 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 on grammar, so some irregular verbs, three examples of past continuous, a lot of examples of, sing of frequent singular and, and plural uh, nouns. So, and um, this is one thing. And um, another thing that you could do is actually, I'm just going to demonstrate, we're back into in the quiz that's on the site, but what happens if you click on edit the quiz? You get into search in subtitles, and the link to the quiz, to the video is in the video tab. And basically, you can see here that all that I wanted to get gapped in my subtitles is just written in this box. And this is what you can do. Here you listen to the short video that you found for your learners, you decide what you want to gap to be gapped out, and you write that in this search field, tick create a quiz, uh, and run the search. And your quiz is created, and then you just copy the link, the URL, and send it to the learners. So, um, basically, what the only thing you need to pay attention here to is that you need to separate everything that you are choosing out all these words with the vertical lines, and you need to wrap everything up in parentheses. So, for example, if I want to look for awesome or amazing, so two words. So, what will be the search term for that? Can you separate them with vertical lines and wrap them up in parentheses? Can you can you type the, the term so that I'm confident that you can? Aha, uh -huh, exactly. Awesome or amazing? No, uh, here. So, not the slash, but the vertical line. And it's great that you did not include any spaces. It's just the word here. And please do not forget the brackets here. Um, on my computer, it's where all the spaces are, but I need to type the uh, keyboard. Oh, I need to use the shift. I would research that. OK. So uh -huh, here, here it is. And again, uh, this is important, vertical line. There is also something, if I want to type more than one word, if I want to find something like I'm not sure, do I just type I'm not sure or do I need uh, the inverted commas? No, inverted commas, it just looks for uh, exactly what I'm looking for. 
So if I if I type I'm not sure, it will not find anything like he's not sure. It will find exactly what I ask it to find. And you do not need to invert here. I'm not sure, correct. Here. But you are lacking the uh, space. So it, it's not gonna find anything because it's looking for the word not sure, which doesn't exist. Okay. And the last thing is you can also uh, use asterisk. Yeah, so, okay, the correct, I'm not sure, something like that. Okay. So, and the last one is if I just want to look for lots of uh, examples and I don't care which word, I just want to add something up, right? You can use the asterisk. And so, how to look for all the adverbs that go with pleased? What's the search for? Yeah, exactly. Pleased. Mm -hmm. Here. This is, unfortunately, this tool does not... Um, here, so I am space star, which goes for asterisk, that goes for uh, a word, space, please. So basically you only include spaces where you would expect spaces. So, right, and um, this is more or less it here, so this kind of gives you a lot of variability to build interesting searches, but also if you do not want variability, all you, you could just listen type in exactly what you want to be gapped out and um, and uh, then create that grid. So basically going back to the question of the syllabus. So for me, how do I normally use this tool? Um, in two ways. So first, to provide learners with grammar, uh, with grammar decoding when we are studying the grammar. Here, because as I said, I think it's extremely important for them to get exposed to those others and errors and so on. And for example, for a very low level group, I would probably ask them to differentiate between, between I was or it was. Okay? So you, um, just, just, we would introduce that with elementary learners and above in our school. So another thing is, well, what does that stand for? This is for fossilized mistakes. So um, for example, some learners even at B1 level do not add plurals to nouns, right? And they say, um, I met a lot of friends yesterday, something like that, right? And um, when you listen to, when, when, when I first did a quiz here, I, I got interested in that and I created a quiz that targeted like the most, 10 most frequent words, nouns in, uh, in English, but either plural or singular. And I started listening to them and I was amazed how difficult it was just to hear the plural. And I didn't expect it to be so difficult. So. And I would, I think that it's important for those learners who have a fossilized mistake to decode, to decode, uh, to practice decoding that. Not only because they might start hearing that, but also because this exposes them to uh, to this feature in in authentic speech and highlights really highlight the feature to them. And the last thing that I really often use this with is. Uh, after the type of work that we did at the beginning, so for instance, we were working with this uh, interview with uh, Leo DiCaprio, and uh, if I found out that it was difficult to be uh, for the learners to hear the word was, so I would create a quiz that targets that um, I would look at what chunks they are with the word I was in this particular video and create a quiz that targets just this problem that the learners have. So basically can diagnose using an interview and then give them uh, decoding practice just of the feature that we had diagnosed in the lesson. 
So this is pretty much it. Um, questions? Where can I find CC videos? So again, um, in order to find subtitled videos, you add um, CC to your YouTube search. And there are hundreds of hours. A suggestion is how to use to query it with very beginner users. I would go with uh, something like Disney. I would go uh, for uh, this, to, to the Disney Channel and some of the cartoons are very, very clear and it's possible to give them, for example, practice differentiating forms of to be and that kind of thing. So, um, audio tracks. Well, I normally go the painful way of recording them using the audio recorder uh, on my computer. I just play it and record it at the same time. How do I use it in uh, in classes? I try to demonstrate that. I try to demonstrate the tool, and then I send them the link uh, to a, a quiz that targets their problems that we. So we basically do not do that in uh, in the class. I show them the tool, and then they do it at home. And uh, I think, yeah, for me, this definitely is uh, a tool that should encourage learner autonomy. Homework, yes. Do I tend to use videos with uh, broader aims? Here, yeah. so basically two types of things here. So um, I would say three. Th I often do three lesson shapes. The first one is I run listening uh, courses in in our company, and uh, there it's basically just a video, a lesson that's based on a video and where we explore first do some uh, awareness raising, then a lot of training and then some consolidation and there is almost even no speaking uh, per se, only speaking about uh, what we found in the video and there are just general um, basic, general English lessons where I would uh, introduce just a little bit of decoding and what I've started doing recently is I'm looking for videos, for example I'm doing uh, models with my learners and I'm looking for a video that has a lot of models so that I could use it in all the traditional ways uh, and then just give them a little bit of decoding practice with models so that this decoding practice is with a video that is contextualized for them. But uh, sometimes I would just give them decontextualized practice. Right. Exporting quizzes here on the list here. Okay, so I might have missed some questions. I'm not sure. Yeah, ESL Lab is fantastic here, especially for lower levels. Just great. So, do, do we have any more questions? If no, I'll just walk you through the remaining, um, the remainder of the week, and we can finish. Thanks, Elena. And basically, if you have any more questions, we are there on the mod on the forums. I know that I haven't been answering it the past two or three days because I was preparing the session, but now I'm not preparing it, so I'm back there. So, um, thanks a lot. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the uh, last of this session, I was I, I am I've been amazed by all your creativity. Uh, that you uh, and by everything that you've been doing out for these four weeks so far. I am really looking forward to um, 
this week and um, this week we've co we've collected a lot of listen and decoding activities and they might this might look the page might look a little daunting right now because um, I purposefully put this all in on the main page just to allow you to tick check boxes uh, but uh, basically of course uh, nobody expects you to read every single um, source and uh, so just dip into the different types of articles that we've collected and I also de definitely recommend to look at some samples of published materials that are there because even if you're not going to use them with your learners they're a fantastic source of ideas which you can actually do and so there are three main tasks uh, for listening decoding activities so first read something about those activities and respond what you think about them then try out the tube quizlet tube quizlet and finally actually create your own listening decoding activity so and the last thing is just a wrap up of the session with uh, the key takeaways that you have and your plans for the future and a little bit later in the week I'll be posting a link to a Google questionnaire that uh, we would like you to uh, fill out and um, so will the recording of this session be available yes uh, when is our final deadline I'm supposed to say next Sunday but uh, I think we'll be extending it a little bit because I know how busy it has been and I'll let you know a little bit later will the platform material be available after the end of the course for some time definitely yes so yeah so I would I would try to wrap most uh, most things uh, until next Sunday uh, because otherwise it might be very difficult for the moderators to catch up with your work if you haven't but if you have just a couple of tasks not finished and you want to do that we will be extending the deadline a little bit okay so have I answered all the questions okay that's a yes <laughs> Will the site be available for us after the course? Yes, yes. So Moodle uh, will be available, and uh, the forums and the materials will be there. Okay. So, thank you very much, and I'm really, really, really looking forward to this final week, and maybe to hearing more from you on Facebook later on. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Keith. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Going to look us out in a minute.